Right, in this video we'll look at uh, the submit button here, which means we can we can basically edit the data there and submit it back to back endless and how to delete a new user. Okay, so in the submit button, what we want to do now, and remember uh, the user can change now any one of these fields. So again, the user are able to delete everything there and try and submit it like this. So we need to test first if everything is empty or not. So I'm going to test if et name dot get text dot to string dot is empty or et mail dot get text dot to string dot is empty or et tell dot get text dot to string dot is empty so if any one of those are empty we cannot do this so if the user has not typed anything there and he wants to, to submit, we can't submit a contact with an empty contact or an email or a what. So that is what we're going to do here. We're going to say a toast there and we're going to ask the user, please enter all details. Now for the rest of this application or the rest of this specific PTN submit, for the else part there is that it's not empty everything has got data in it and we want to change this contact now so now we're going to refer back to the application class and we go to that contact and remember in your application class this context now is the list of all of your contacts so in that context we want to get the specific contact that we want to edit now so it's going to be get remember the index value that we pass through so that is the contact that we want to basically change and on that we're going to use set or one of the setters so if it's the number that was changed or whatever but we won't know so we're going to try and set all of them so i'm going to say set name as the first one and that will be from et name dot get text dot to string dot trim right so that's the name so we're going to do the same thing again for the other three or other two we have three of them so then next we're going to set the i think we call it number set the number to be et tell dot get text dot to string dot trim and the last one will be the name the number and i think it was the email set email and this one was set mail okay so basically on our contacts list we're setting the name the number and the email so remember that this contact came from back endless so that back endless objects are all in here and we're referring to one specific one at that index value where we clicked and we're setting the name the number and the email on that specific contact now after you've done this you've basically changed your contact list and now we want to send this one object this one contact to back endless for an update so I'm going to say show progress, set it to true. On TV load, we can set the text as updating contact dot dot dot. Please wait dot dot dot. Right. And then we can actually go into back endless. So we can say back endless dot persistence dot save and you can see it looks the same way as we've, we're saving or creating a new contact but remember now this contact that we have here already has an object id so by sending an object that already has an object id will update that specific object okay so we're going to say back in this dot persistence dot save and then the, the next one that you need to pass in here is the object itself so we're going to go to the application class dot contacts dot get index and that's the object that we want to update and then we will just go to new async callback and that updates my contact for me in backendless right so now in handle fault we can go and say toast and let's say error plus fault dot get message again right and then remember to show progress set it to false now in handle response, this is when the this contact was actually now updated and there's a link to that contact that was updated. So remember now, here we've, uh, we've changed the data and the user also typed the data there, so it's changed. But these two will not be changed. 
So when the guy clicks on submit and everything went fine, we need to change these two as well. So that one is TV name and, and TV char. So we're going to set them up quickly. So if everything is fine, we're going to go to TV char. We're going to set the text again. And the text will be application class dot contacts dot get index dot get name. That's the name of the guy, but we want to convert it to uppercase and get the character at position zero. And just remember to add a space there or just empty text. So that is basically setting the text back to that one. And then we also want to set the text back to TV name. So I think I'm just going to copy this again. Take that, paste it. This one will now become TV name. And we will get the name, but we will not convert it to uppercase or any of those, just the name. Right. And then that should be that should be it. So we're going to show a toast then again to the user and tell the user contact successfully updated. And then we will show the progress and we'll set in false. Right, so let's let's see if this one works. So this submit button will will get the changes, set the changes on our list, also go to back end and change it there. And then uh, basically we set the text on those two, show the toast, and we stop showing the progress. So now if the user will see now, let's stop and run and see how it how it does when we click on the back button to update the list view as well. So that we already did with uh, the start activity for result. So that should work. So we'll just test it now. Right there, we're logging in. List of contacts. There's John Rambo. And you can see John Rambo is there. Click there. There's the edit. There's the email. So let's say we're changing the email to .co.za instead of .com. And we're going to say submit. Updating the contact, contact, please wait. You can see it's .co.za there. Uh, so what we can do is click back and it should say .co.za there as well. So you can see this list view has been updated as well. And even if I go back and I click on the list of contacts, it should be updated on back endless also .co.za. So if we go to the website and you refresh the, uh, your email for for John Rambo it should be .co.za. Okay, so let's just go back here and let's change something else there. Click on John Rambo and let's call it, let's call him John Peters instead of John Rambo and then save. So you can see John Peters there, John Peters there, online, John Peters. Let's click back, John Peters. Okay, so everything was updated successfully. Now the last thing for this video is to quickly go and do the delete button there. So what we want to do now is if we click on delete, we want to ask the user first, are you sure that you want to delete? Because uh, it's you it, it can accidentally click on delete and then it just deletes the contact. So we want the user to, to ask or first ask him, do you want to delete this specific contact? Okay, so let's go to the coding. Android Studio, uh, the button is where I, IV delete. So let's go into this section. So we want to do that alert dialog first. So I'm going to say final alert dialog and make sure it's that version 7. So if you go to imports there at the top, make sure it's the support version 7 alert dialog. Where are we now? There we go. And I'm going to call it, I'm going to use the builder one there. So it's alert dialog dot builder. I'm going to call it dialog equals new alert dialog dot builder. And then you need to pass in the context here. So I'm going to say contact info dot this. And that's fine then. So now on this dialog object, I'm going to set a message. So choose set message. And the message will be something like, are you sure you want to delete the contact and then close it off and then the next one we want to have two buttons to let the user choose yes or no so I'm going to say set 
positive button and the, the text for the positive button will be okay and then for the next argument we will say new on and the on again will take the dialog interface on on click listener and it opens up the rest for you so this will happen inside of this on click when he clicks OK so here we will delete it actually and then we'll also have a negative button so we're going to say dot set negative button and the text will be no and then new on again right so now we've got the two buttons there there's a positive button there's a negative button and then after that we can say dialog dot show which will start showing your dialog so if he says no we would do what do not want to do anything because it's just going to cancel the whole dialog but when he clicks on the positive button we want to now delete this specific contact so here we will start showing the progress again set it to true and it will start showing the progress also set the text on that load edit text or sorry text view and we will say something like deleting contact please wait now in order to delete this specific person on back endless or this contact on back endless we're going to say back endless dot persistence again dot of and we need to indicate the class or the specific table in back endless to delete it from contact dot class dot remove and then you can see we're going to use this one that says we want the entity so what is the entity it's in the application class dot contacts the one that we want to remove dot get and we're going to go to the index again so that's the one we want to remove and then the second argument is going to the new async callback again okay and i'm going to close it off there just open it up a bit bigger so basically we're saying go to the contact table and remove this specific object which is that contact that we selected okay now in handle fault we can just say toast error fault dot get message and then in handle response is where we know now know that this specific contact is now being deleted so now we must remember that if we go back if we click there delete and we click on back we want to also update this list view which means that in the application class in the application class dot contacts we need to also remove the specific object at that index value so also in the context we'll remove it but only when we get to handle response which means it was successfully removed online so we also remove it now on the phone to show in the list view then we'll show the toast and tell the user that everything has been successful so we'll say contact successfully removed then uh, because we're going to finish down this activity I'm going to set the result remember this activity starts for a specific result and I'll set the result as result is okay and then we can just close off this activity so it's contact info dot this dot finish and then we're done okay so basically when he clicks on delete we ask him are you sure you want to delete if he clicks on okay we start showing the progress tell him that we're deleting the contact please wait update if it's done and everything's fine we update our own contact list show him the toast and then close down the activity right let's check out this one quickly so let's run let's also go to back endless quickly to see if we can delete right so there we are logging in again go to list of contacts let's click on john peters again we can again edit it or we can delete so if i click on delete are you sure you want to delete if i say no nothing happens if i click ok it now deletes john peters and you can see when we go back to contacts we can only see peter pan and now you can see on online also it's only peter pan even if i go out and i refresh my list of contacts i will also only get peter pan this is then the end of the video for a series of videos where we created an application that uses the basic features of Backendless. So I hope that after these videos you've got a clear idea of how Backendless works.